Facebook peeps. I'm so excited. I'm back doing another live Facebook video. I think these are super fun. I did my first one yesterday and I had so much fun that I decided to create another one because I wanted to follow up with what I was sharing yesterday. And um, I was inspired to make the video yesterday because we went out for Cinco de Mayo, Michael and um, I did. And we ran into one of his coffee dates that he had met for coffee when he was dating on Match.com over six years ago. And she was out with her single girlfriends. And the next day, yesterday, I woke up and I was feeling like, wow, I was really like um, feeling for her because she is out and she's still single. And so I was talking to Michael today and I was asking him, you know, why didn't you call her? And so we had a really great discussion um, about, you know, what this means for men and I wanted to share that with you and another thing um, is Michael is a very he's a gentleman and he's what he calls a man's man he has a lot of integrity he said no matter what all the dates that he went on he always paid for dinner for coffee and he um, he even though he could tell within the first few minutes whether or not that woman was a match for him he was always a gentleman and he always like I said, paid. And so I want you to really hear this. So men know within the first couple of minutes of meeting you, whether or not they are going to pursue you. And so you really want to own that because that's really valuable information coming from a man. But I already knew that because I have been, you know, I've been, this isn't my first rodeo. <laughs> and so, um, but why, why don't, why didn't he call her back? So there's a couple things that happens on dates, and we'll go through a couple scenarios, so I hope you can um, take away some tips uh, and you can start to, to apply this strategy right away. So <clears throat> maybe you're on um, a dating app, or maybe you are on a Match on, on, online, and you are doing instant messaging, you're going back and forth, and or he sends you a little contact and you guys are connecting, and it seems like um, you're going to talk on the phone, and he says, yeah, I'm going to call you, and then you wait for his call, and he doesn't call you, or um, he texts you, and he says, yes, I'm going to call you, and he doesn't call, or perhaps you go on a date, or even two dates, and things to be seen, seem like they're going well, and he doesn't follow up. <clears throat> And you're wondering, wow, what happened? You know, I thought, first of all, you're upset because he didn't call. He didn't keep his word. And so that's that's a bummer, right? Nobody, uh, nobody likes that. And then another thing that happens if you've gone out for a couple of times and he doesn't, he ghosts you. It's like, how does this happen? Hi, Maureen. Hi, honey. So nice to see you. Uh, it's hard to read these, so I have to look forward to see who's here. Yeah, perfect topic. This is so good. So... What happens is, and this is the, the part that we don't get to know, is you don't get to know why. You don't always know why. In fact, mostly you're never going to know why. And that's the part that you have to come into some kind of acceptance. It doesn't really matter. I want you to write this down. If he doesn't call you back, so what? You really start to, you have to start to detach from outcomes. You don't know why. You have to live in the unknown, in the uncertainty of dating in order to keep your momentum going. And so did that woman know why Michael didn't call her back? No, he, she wasn't a match for him. That's what he said. He's a gentleman. He said, we weren't a match. That was it. That was it. You don't need more of an ex, ex, um, ex, explanation. There we go. <laughs> you don't need more of an ex explanation than that because um, a man doesn't want to hurt your feelings okay so if he goes on a coffee date with you and he says oh I had a really great time let's do it again or maybe you say which I think this is totally fine and I asked Michael about this when you're on a date and you're having a good time you can say thank you so much I've had a wonderful evening thank you for the the wonderful dinner and the great conversation and I'd love to do it again it's perfectly okay to say that on a date just like that and smiling and so you're giving him a clear signal that you would you would say yes to a second date and men need to hear that and so um, and he's probably going to agree with you and he's gonna say yeah me too sure I'm gonna call you I'd love to and then you never hear from him again right the reason why he said that he would call you it because he doesn't want to hurt your feelings men will do anything 
to avoid hurting a woman's feelings. You really need to know this. You know, they they have sisters, they have mothers, and they've learned the hard way that if you um, hurt a woman's feelings, you're in trouble. So they don't want to hurt your feelings. And also, there's some signals that are happening in that process that you really need to start. You so. The dating process is all about catching the signals and taking notes, right? You're, you're making little mental notes of all of his behavior, especially within that first couple of dates, or even when you're, when you're instant messaging back and forth online. He's sending you signals, and you need to read between the lines a little bit more carefully, and um, you will start to see that maybe he's not being consistent already before you even meet him. So if a man doesn't call you back after going on a date, just know that he it wasn't a match for him and then you have to move on and why do you have to move on it's so important that you move on quickly because time is so precious you don't want to waste any time on this guy he doesn't deserve your time and I know that you can spend so much time thinking about what you said and what you did and what he said and what he did and then you're on you know you're texting your friend or you're calling your friend or you're on Facebook and you're spending hours days sometimes weeks on wondering why why this guy hi Darby hi Pete why why that um, this guy didn't call you back and during that time what's happening is look how much time you've lost you've gone unconscious you're not present now you're worried about the future you're worried about the past and takes you out of the current moment where all your opportunities are showing up. Men, you could be meeting or wanting to take you out. You aren't going to connect with them because you're not there, because you're thinking about why he didn't call you. And so to recap, one, you don't get to know, and it doesn't really matter why. Um, the important thing is that you're not a match. So you just have to accept that's a part of dating. And the sooner you can accept that, the faster you can go through this process that actually gets really interesting. And um, this happened to me. I actually got, hi Nat, I actually got um, ghosted. And I wanna share a little story about how I was ghosted. And, and yeah, it happens to everyone. I, I met a guy, I was doing all this work on myself and I met a guy who was a great guy, a really good man. And we started seeing each other and um, he lived in San Francisco and I was here in San Diego. And we even went to on a trip to Lake Tahoe and um, he came down to La Jolla and we went to Malibu. And I thought, wow, he could be the one. I was really thinking that. I mean, all the all the signs were there. I was enjoying him. He had all the qualities I was looking for. And then after that weekend, this fantastic weekend, in fact, I never heard from him again. He just ghosted me. I mean, this was after several months of dating and spending quality time together. He just disappeared. And I was freaking out. <laughs> you can imagine. I was pretty kind of heartbroken, actually. And um, yeah, it, it was it was not fun. It was embarrassing, right? I was embarrassed. I was like, what did I do? What did I say? You know, and I was so sad. I was like carrying on crying and I actually wrote him a really long letter, but I didn't send it. I emailed it to myself and when I read it, I thought, who is this woman? <laughs> the letter was written by like a third party, this desperate, needy, insecure, <laughs> pathetic person, like my ego. And so in that moment, I realized that I needed to, to let him go. Now, <laughs> I know you guys are laughing at me. Pretty funny, huh? Well, I'm laughing now because I'm happily married, but at that time it was pretty devastating, so I decided I needed to let him go. Because if I didn't, I would be stuck in this energy. And it's one thing I learned, uh, and it's a valuable lesson, and it took me my whole life to learn it, is the art of letting go. You, we have to learn to let go much faster, and I'm teaching this in my um, Bridge to Love program, this, this, this art. It's really a life skill that you need to learn because as soon as you let go of something else, something else can come in. But as long as you're holding on to something, you're actually blocking what could come to you. And so this is why it's such a skill that you need to learn. And so what I did was I did this exercise. And um, what you can do if you're holding on to someone or an event or something that you haven't released, just, um, just go into this exercise. Say, thank you, I release you. Thank you, so I'm thanking him. Thank you for this lesson. Thank you for this experience. Thank you for showing me what I needed to, to learn. And then I release you. And so I did that for 45 minutes until I cut that energy cord to him. 
and then I was back in balance. I was back to the present moment. And right after that, I mean, literally within a couple of weeks, I met Michael. So I'm so glad that I had learned this 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 um, ability to to um, let go of the past and stay in the present moment. And again, that is why I am so inspired to do this work because once you get the hang of it, you can move through life so effortlessly. You don't get hung up on all these little details that keep you stuck and single. And it's one of the things that I'm teaching in my Bridge to Love five-week accelerated course that I really want you to take a look at because I poured my heart and soul into packing this five weeks through so much content so that you can get these life principles down so that you can quickly create this bridge from where you are now to where you need to be so that you can start attracting and manifesting exactly what you want in your life. And right now I'm having this special until tonight. You can get the program for a half price. So make sure you take a look at the link that's on the, um, in the email or on the page right here. And so, um, I have a lot of clients that do this. Just recently, one of my clients, she met a fa fabulous guy. I mean, she's, she's amazing. All of my clients are amazing. Now, all of you watching this, you're amazing. And what happens is you just don't realize how valuable and how amazing you really are. And so you hold on in fear because you think nothing better is going to come. And so you meet one guy and you're like, wow, he's great. You're going to cling to him, even though he knew within the first three minutes that he wasn't a match for you. Isn't that astonishing? He knew, but you didn't get the memo. So what's happening here? Why are we not getting the message that a man isn't interested in us? Because we were pouring all of our hopes and dreams into this person that we actually know virtually anything about. And so we don't really know our value and we're actually actually not staying present to what's happening. Now, if you're present, if you're, if you're staying in the now, and um, your body's in the now, so if you're staying in your body, you're anchored into the be here now on dates, you're going to be able to notice what this man's body language is telling you. I mean, you can tell if a man's shutting down or if he's engaged with you and listening to you. And you can tell right away if he's interested in you, if you would just pay more attention to, for one, how you're feeling and what he's communicating to you through his body language, through what he's saying. And also in those texts and um, emails, if he doesn't call you back and when he says he does, what he says he, he's going to, then I recommend that you move on quickly, as soon as possible. You just thank you for revealing who you are. That's the thank you. Thank you so much for quickly revealing to me who you are right now. So it doesn't mean he's bad. We don't want to get off on a tangent. It doesn't mean that man that ghosted me is bad, okay? It just means that we were not on the same page. We were not in alignment. I wanted something now, and he wasn't there yet. So it doesn't make him a bad person. I, and I forgive him for ghosting on me. I'm glad that he did, or I wouldn't have met Michael. And I wouldn't have released him and been able to connect with Michael. I would have missed this opportunity. Michael only lived three blocks from me, but this guy lived in San Francisco. So, I, so there's a, that's a whole other topic. And so um, uh, I've seen this recently with one of my clients I was going to share with you. Six weeks, she was um, hanging on to this guy who's fantastic. He's amazing. I'm recently divorced. And so he was still, he's still processing that. And she's kind of been waiting around for him to contact her after a, an amazing first date. I mean, they spent nine hours together, an amazing connection. He He's a wonderful man, but he's not on the same page. And so she's been kind of waiting around, hoping he's going to contact her. Their their communications were few and far between. And I really encouraged her to just let him go so somebody else can show up. Because as long as you're hanging on to the past or you're worried about the future, you're taking yourself out of the moment. So this is, again, this is a skill that you can learn, but you have to practice it. And you need to um, really get to understanding the power of being in the in the now um, how much power it has because right now is all we have is this moment. We don't pro tomorrow is a promised um, I don't know what happens, but I I think that we we get caught up in this magical thinking Actually, I do know what happens we get we get caught up in this magical thinking and we disconnect from reality from what's really going on in our life and being more emotionally honest about how you're showing up and so another one of my clients uh, went out with this man Two hot dates, lots of texting back and forth, um, lots of fun banter, and then he ghosted her. But fortunately, she's been doing the work, she's been following my coaching, and she was able to not attach to him. And so when he ghosted her, 
she knew to move on. And she was, again, thank you for revealing who you are. And I have boundaries now, and I release you. And now she had another date on the back end of him not showing up for her on Friday night. She had a, a backup date in place on Sunday because she's learned this valuable lesson after being online for 15 years. She's learned this lesson in just a matter of a couple of weeks by practicing what I'm sharing with you now is detaching from outcomes. Because here's the truth. Think about it. We don't really know what's going to happen, right? We, we have to live in the unknown. The knowns are what a mind, our mind is addicted to. The knowns are things that you've already experienced. And there's no evolution in that. There just isn't. The knowns are your memories and of patterns and experiences you've already had. And you don't want to repeat those, right? You want to create new experiences. And so you have to stay out of those knowns and step into the field of unlimited possibility, which is the unknown. And that is a skill that I can teach you. And it's really exciting because let me tell you what, the unknown is far more interesting than the knowns because you get to wake up every day and go, what's gonna happen today? Am I gonna meet the love of my life? I mean, that's the possibilities. But when you wake up and you're thinking, wonder why he didn't call me, when you're supposed to be like, who cares? <laughs> because I have all day today and it's, it's a new day. Then you're blocking an opportunity that could have come in, but you were busy worrying about the past or stressing about the future, which took you out of today. So living in the now, detaching from outcomes and, and embracing the unknown where all the magic of life is. And I mean, I don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. I have a plan, but I'm going to stay in the now so that I can remain fluid and flexible. Staying in the now and detaching from outcomes is all about going with the flow. That's a very feminine quality. We're going with the flow, we're just going. We, we don't get a call back, we go, we swat it away. It's like that thought comes in and it's saying to you, oh, you're not good enough or you're never gonna meet somebody. You gotta look at those little, um, those thoughts like flies. <laughs> swat them away, swat them away. Don't. Go into the story, okay? Just, it wasn't a match. Accept that and move on. And remember, what a blessing it is that we have these opportunities to meet so many amazing people in such a short amount of time. If you could embrace these skills, think how much faster um, this process would go for you. And again, that's why I created this program because I want to fast track all of you into finding your soulmates. It doesn't really need to take that much time. Um, the My first marriage I was engaged within six months and my second my wonderful husband asked me in eight months so um, I am a little bit of an expert on getting engaged girls and this works it is a strategy and you do have to um, you have to you have to get clear on what you want and you have to stay the course hi Shivani <laughs> so nice to see you you're next this woman is next. I know that she's going to be engaged this year because she's she's following the strategy. She's she's staying in the present. She's detaching from outcomes and she's and she's claiming her value. She knows intrinsically what her worth is and she's not going to allow um, herself to spend any time worrying about some guy that she doesn't even know. That's the value that she has for herself and I couldn't be more proud of her. So so um Nice to see you here. So make sure you check out The Bridge to Love. This is absolutely your opportunity to work with me in a semi-private setting. I'll have five live calls where all my calls are always interactive. I, I'm a big believer in interactive, in interactive coaching because I want you to have some big takeaways and ahas and be able to work through that with you in that setting, in that moment. moment because um, it's more powerful and you're more likely to remember um, and remember the content than if I was just to lecture and you're just listening and taking notes. But when you're a part of the conversation, then you can learn much faster because you internalize and emotionalize the, the material. And so it doesn't mean that you have to engage, but you'll have an opportunity to if you'd like to, and at least you'll be able to listen to the others. And that's gonna be really helpful for you. Um, and so check out the, uh, the special I'm having. I want to make it affordable for everyone. And so um, you've got a 50% uh, discount up until tonight. So jump on that offer. At least check out the, uh, the link there. Hi, Karen. What did I learn from my first marriage? Oh, that's a great question. 
Well, I learned that I spent 20 years um, in denial about the fact that I wasn't happy. And that was a, a big price to pay, two decades of my life. And I, I should have let go. I don't know if you read my email about my true story, but I knew right away um, what what was going on in my first marriage, but I chose to suppress it. I didn't want to face the truth because the truth was really painful and I didn't know how to let go. Um, and so that cost me. And that's why I said it was the biggest lesson I ever learned in my life is letting go, letting go of the past because it doesn't exist anymore. The only thing that I had was the moment and I just got so tired of not only living in the past, but getting, being stuck to the wounds, being stuck there in my thinking, not forgiving, holding on to grudges, being resentful. Um, I just used that as excuses not to grow up emotionally. Do I stayed in victim mode for 20 years and guess what? He was my biggest teacher. I am so grateful. Thank you. I release you. Thank you. I am so grateful for that experience because he taught me my life's biggest lesson, the art of letting go. And that's why, again, why I'm so passionate to teach you. But it doesn't have to take you two, get, two decades to learn this. Um, but you're either going to learn through love or you're going to learn through pain. Either way, you're going to learn because those are the motivators in life, right? Now that I learned all of my lessons through pain, I'm learning them through love. I'm excited about my next lesson because I know I'm going to learn something and I'm gonna, it's going to take me further down my path in life. What did you learn? Okay, did we have any other questions? Karen, did that answer your question? That was a good one. Letting go. And um, <clears throat> there's a reason why we don't let go is because we're too afraid to, to move forward. And it's usually anchored to some unconscious belief systems uh, that you really need to explore. And you can just do a quick sentence completion and uncover why uh, the, co or the consequences of not letting go. Because I didn't let go of Rick, for example, you can just use somebody that you haven't let go of. <clears throat> because I haven't released Rick, I, and answer that question, and I'm just making this up. Because I haven't released Rick, I stay home instead of going out. Because I haven't released Rick, I eat. Because I haven't released Rick, I drink. Because I haven't released Rick, I'm still angry about the past. Because I'm still angry about the past, I'm I'm really uptight around my friends. Because I'm really uptight around my friends, I don't have any friends. Because I don't have any friends, I'm really lonely. Because I'm really lonely, I stay home. Because I stay home, I eat. Do you see how the pattern, you see the consequences stack up like dominoes? And so there's that's how you learn through pain. Um, the way you learn through love is saying, okay, I get it. I'm going to take full responsibility for my life. And the great thing about all the mistakes you've made, and this is really powerful, is if you accept that you are responsible for all the mistakes, so-called mistakes you've made, and you've created your life, that's exciting because that tells me that you are you know that you created your life. You can create a whole new reality for yourself. But you have to be willing to start with the responsibility. And let's turn that around, response able. You just need to be able to respond to yourself. You need to be able to look at those signals when he says, why, when if he doesn't call, I want you to be like, next, next, no problem. Thank you, thank you, I release you. Because he just did you a favor. He just saved you time. And you know what? It's a numbers game sometimes. The faster you go through this, the better you get at saying no. We discussed that yesterday. And and um, moving on and, and, and staying empowered. When we get stuck in this overthinking about why I didn't call, it disempowers you. It makes you feel, what? How does it make you feel? It makes you feel terrible, right? And when you don't feel good, you block everything that you want to come to you. Feeling good needs to be the highest priority. The highest priority because when you feel good, the channel of love and everything you want, you're in receiving. It's all coming to you. But when you feel bad and you're gone unconscious and you're thinking, it's like saying stop to all the things that I want in life. I'm cutting myself off from source. I'm going to go unconscious and I'm blocking everything. That's why it's important to let your feelings be your guidance system. How you feel sets the barometer for what you can attract. When you feel good, like me, I'm, 
I'm excited about life and I always am because I know that I need to keep my vibration high so that I can achieve, have, do, feel, experience all the things that I want. As soon as I take a dip, woo, I'm blocking myself. That's the way it works. So, hi Kimberly. <laughs> hi Kimberly, nice to see you here. Any, any last questions? I am going to check over here on my computer and see if I missed any questions that I wanted to. Um, nope. Okay, well, I think that um, I think I've answered some questions and talked to you about my Bridge to Love, and this is your opportunity to take a peek at that and take this opportunity to um, take advantage of my offer. Ladies, um, each week I will be giving you a one-hour call that's going to be on a replay and each week you'll have a discovery sheet it's a worksheet that you're going to be able to work through like the sentence completion using the tools that i teach you so you can quickly start to get some traction and um hi joanna hi jo is it johanna hi and each week you're going to be making picking up more momentum and more momentum one built one week building on the next until you we go through all five weeks and everything again is going to be on replay there's 10 amazing bonuses um, all of the bonuses are created by me except for one they're all based on my 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 teaching uh, my coaching the training and my real world experiences and those are of my client success stories I mean these are strategies that work they they work because I am my own first client, okay? I don't just teach things that I've read in books or learned in seminars or um, through my coaching certifications. I actually became my own first client when I got my own coaching. I worked with my coach in 60 hours, not counseling, coaching. Coaching is different. Coaching is like going to the gym. You gotta flex your muscles, girls. So I broke an emotional sweat and I worked through all of my stuff and I, I was so empowered by that. That's what inspired me to become a coach. I was like, I felt, I never felt better in my whole life. And I thought if I can do it, then I can teach others to do it. So I was my own first client. And so the things that I'm teaching you, I've already had to do on myself, learn these things for myself, through, go work through my own experiences. Because here's the thing, I could only really take you as far on your journey that I've gone on mine. And when you're when you're thinking about who what kind of coach you want to work with that is a very important factor you need to look at the person that's across from you and if they have qualities just like your ideal man list and things that you want then that's the person that you want to mentor you and I also have a little ace in my back pocket my husband Michael he is so amazing because he so, so, so wants to see all of you happy. He's so good about answering questions and I can run so many scenarios by him. So I always have the inside track on the, the man's and um, the ideal man's mind. He will um, give me um, answers to every question that I put to him and I just love him for that because he really genuinely cares just like I do, genuinely care for you. Um, Hi, Melissa. Hi, honey. Gosh, haven't seen you in so long. Sending you lots of love and aloha, sweet sister. <laughs> oh, I remember you in the good old days. We had so much fun. Um, what else? We have any more questions? I'm going to sign off now. It's been so fun connecting with you. Again, never give up. Give up on your dreams. Never give up on love. Um, it, it's life changes on a dime. I said that yesterday. One moment you're single and the next minute you're with the love of your life. And life is better when you have love in it because what happens is all these questions about what am I going to do with my life? Where am I going to go? All of those questions are answered when you're in a committed relationship. Then you can spend all of your time planning your, your time together and, and focusing on other aspects of your life. And you can kind of check this box off. And so it really does give you a lot of support too. a lot I get so much support from Michael so much encouragement so much love and he just reflects back to me how I'm doing and it just feels amazing and I want that all for you so check out the bridge to love link and um, shoot me an email or PM me on Facebook if you have any questions I'm happy to answer those and I'm just happy to connect with all of you hope you all have a wonderful wonderful evening lots of love bye bye everybody